Okay, last part of chapter five, there's a brief bit about tree diagrams. So you've already seen these at GCSE, and I've said at GCSE, tree diagrams were an effective way of showing the outcome of two events which happen in succession. That means that they happen like in order. Um, I don't necessarily think tree diagrams are that amazing. They're quite a nice way of like visually seeing what's happening, um, but equally you can just list the outcomes and they should work just as well. So here I've got that there are three yellow and two green counters in a bag. I take two counters at random, determine the probability that they are of the same colour and that they are of different colours. Um, so this one, it's not super clear whether I'm actually putting the counters back into the bag. I'm going to just say that I am putting these ones back into the bag. So I'm going to say I replace them before I take another one. So for the tree diagram, you're going to have your two branches to begin with. You either pick a yellow one or you pick a green one. That's your first pick. If you pick a yellow one, you've got the options of either picking another yellow one or a green one, or you've got the options, if you pick a green one, of picking a yellow one or a green one. So you start from here and they tell you all of the different possible outcomes that you could get. So you could have picked a yellow and then a yellow, a yellow and then a green, a green and then a yellow, or a green and then a green. Not particularly exciting here. Um, the probability that you pick a yellow to begin with is going to be three fifths and green would have been two fifths because you put it back in. The probability is still going to be three fifths for a yellow and two fifths for a green, three fifths for a yellow and two fifths for a green. Now, the only thing you really need to know here is that as you go along the branches, because they are happening twice, you multiply probabilities. So the probability of getting a yellow and a yellow, which I've got over here, the probability of getting yellow and then a yellow is going to be three fifths times three fifths, which is nine out of 25. And I'm interested in whether they are the same color. So this other way of getting the same color is doing green and then green which would be two fifths times two fifths or four out of 25. So if I answer part A of the question, the probability that they are the same color is going to be nine 20 fifths plus four 20 fifths, which is 13 20 fifths. I'm gonna do it in an alternative way in just a second as well. For part B of the question, the probability they are of different colors. Well, if you wanted to, you could work out the probability of getting yellow then green, which is going to be three fifths times two fifths, which is obviously six twenty fifths. And you've got the probability of doing green then yellow, which is two fifths times three fifths, which is six twenty fifths. So these ones added together is going to be twelve twenty fifths. Equally, though, you could have just done one minus this probability that you've got over here, because you either have that they're the same or they're different. So you've got to either have it and um, you can't have those two things. They're either the same or different, which means that them being the same and different are mutually exclusive events. So they can't happen at the same time. So I could say the probability that they are different. I can either do one minus 13 20 fifths or I can just say it's the six 20 fifths plus the six 20 fifths, which is just 12 20 fifths that we've got there. Now, I probably wouldn't have drawn a tree diagram for this question. What I probably would have done, if I just quickly whack in another page here, I probably would have just said, if I wanted the same colour, I would just think to myself, OK, well, I could either get yellow, yellow, and yellow, yellow is going to be three fifths times three fifths. And I could get green, green, which is going to be two fifths times two fifths. And then I just add those probabilities together, which just gives me the answer I had before, which was nine, four, 13, 20 fifths. Equally, if I wanted to say that they are different colours, I could say I could do yellow green and I could also have green yellow. Well, the probability of getting yellow green and green yellow, they're both going to be two fifths times three fifths. But because there's two different ways of doing it, I'm going to multiply it by two. So I end up with uh, 12 over 25. So the reason I multiply by two is because there are two different ways of doing it. And because it doesn't matter if you get a yellow and then a green or then a green and a yellow, the probabilities are still going to be the same. You can just double it to get those two different options that you've got there. OK, this isn't something that's in the textbook, but I wanted to pick out a couple of things about some repeated events. So if events are happening uh, more than once. So I've got here the probability that I hit a target on each shot is 0.3. I keep firing until I hit the target. Determine, I probability, determine the probability I hit the target on the fifth shot. So this is going to say this is going to be a miss and then a hit. Those are the two letters I'm going to use. Well, if I want to hit it on the fifth shot, that means that I need to miss it 
miss it, miss it, miss it, and then I need to hit it. So a miss is going to be 0 0.7. So I'm going to do 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 times 0 0.7 for those four events. And then I'm also then going to have to have that probability of it being 0 0.3. But obviously, the better way of writing this thing that I've got here is going to be 0 0.7 to the power of four. So that's missing it four times and then getting it exactly right on that fifth time, which is going to be multiplying it by 0 0.3. So I'm just going to do this in my calculator. That's 0 0.7 to the power of 4 multiplied by 0 0.3. And I get 0 0.07203. And we could round that if we needed to. So as a percentage, there is only a 7% chance that you get it on that fifth go. OK, let's try the next one. The probability I am on time to school on any day is 0.95. Determine the probability that I am late on Monday and Wednesday, but not on Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. So this is for a particular week. OK, so I'm going to use this for late and I'm going to use this for not late. So I want to be late on Monday, not late on Tuesday, late on Wednesday, not late on Thursday and not late on Friday. So just to make that a bit clearer, I want these ones to be not late. OK, so the probability I am um, on time is 0.95. So this one of being late is going to be 0.05. I'm going to have 0.95 for the green one, 0.05 for being late, 0.95 and 0.95. Okay, well, I didn't need to write it like that, did I? Because I want to be late on two of the days, which is 0.05 squared, and on time for three of the days, which is 0.95 cubed. So I'm going to do 0.05 squared multiplied by 0.95 cubed. So this is um, a very rare thing that might be happening. It is going to be 0.00214. And I'm going to do that to three significant figures. 0.00214. So that particular um, combo of being late on Monday and Wednesday Day, but not on Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. That is very, very rare that that would happen. It is a less than 1% chance that that would happen. Okay, so you can try exercise 5D now.